So today we're going to talk about atrial depolarization and the P wave. So what are the normal characteristics of a P wave? Well, normally it's less than 120 milliseconds in length. And in terms of amplitude, in the limb leads, it's less than 2.5 millimeters in height. And in the precordial leads, it's normally less than 1.5 millimeters in height. The P wave represents atrial depolarization, which usually starts in the right atrium and then spreads to the left atrium before moving on to the various other parts of the heart to activate the ventricular system. So in terms of when you look at a P wave, the first one third to 50% of the actual P wave is reflective of right atrial depolarization, whereas the last one third, one half of the actual P wave is representative of left atrial depolarization. And this gives P waves a number of characteristics that you need to know about. For example, in the chest lead V1, for example, the P wave may have a biphasic appearance in that the first half of the actual P wave has an upward deflection, whereas the second half representing left atrial depolarization has a downward deflection before returning to the baseline. This generally represents the fact that the electrode is seeing the two currents move in opposite directions to each other and therefore registers the first half as an upward deflection representing right atrial depolarization and the second half representing left atrial depolarization which is moving in an opposite direction and is reflected in a downward depolarization. P pulmonale occurs due to right atrial enlargement. The reason it's a peaked P wave is because right atrial depolarization is delayed slightly, which means that it occurs simultaneously with left atrial depolarization or very close together. And this leads to a greater amplitude of a P wave that you see. And therefore in P pulmonale, you're going to see a peaked P wave as the morphology of the P wave on the ECG. affects a delay in left atrial depolarization. Um, in terms of what you'll see on the ECG, left atrial depolarization will be delayed. So right atrial depolarization will occur at the proper time, so early on in the P wave morphology. Whereas you'll get a bit of a gap between that and left atrial depolarization. This will lead to kind of an upward stroke and then a notching and then left atrial depolarization and then the actual ending of the P wave. So what you're going to see is a bifid or notched P wave that represents P mitrale. And here are a number of causes of P mitrale listed in the next slide. Other abnormalities of P wave morphology that you need to know about would include multifocal atrial tachycardia, which is defined as P wave of three different morphologies with a heart rate greater than 100 beats per second. And the reason you have a P wave of three different morphologies is it reflects the fact that the pacemaker of the heart is originating from three different areas at least in the atria itself. So you're getting an ectopic origination of the actual sinus pulse or the P wave pulse in the atria. And typically you see multifocal atrial tachycardia in pulmonary conditions such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Wandering pacemaker kind of has the same principle in that you're going to see different P wave morphologies, but the actual heart rate will not be tachycardic, so it should be less than 100. And again, while you'll see different P waves, which represents the fact that the actual atrial impulse is originating from different parts of the atria every single time, you're not going to see a tachycardia associated with it, and it tends not to be pathological. Other things that we're going to discuss regarding P wave morphology in a few further sections later on would include atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. For now, you just need to know that there are abnormalities in the P waves on an ECG in these conditions as well. And we'll cover them in more detail in the upcoming ECG sections.